Monster Energy Supercross comes to Nashville for the first time ever. And it wouldn't be fair if a first time event didn't get in on all the fun of what has been a phenomenal 2019 season with unpredictable race wins, unpredictable championship leaders, and everything else. It was a, another wild one here, brought to you by Gold Valves. Right here, revalve kit in a box. Suspension will be plusher. Better bottoming resistance, more traction, designed and made in the United States, and we will give you a set. See this right here? Look at that. This could be yours. Just check out the bio underneath this video and you can email to get a set of gold valves. Now let's talk about the unpredictable racing. There is no way, there was no way anyone thought Eli Tomac was going to win tonight's race. Now we know the last couple of weeks Tomac has been struggling big time based on his usual very high standards. He's been going backwards in the races. That's not good. That led to every single theory under the sun. Look, when a rider at Tomac's level struggles to that degree, we don't just think that he had an off night. We start thinking about like team turmoil and injury turmoil, or is he burnt out, or is he not want to be here? Is he not motivated? Is he just scrambled? What's the problem? Well, he was just not comfortable. And he didn't look really comfortable in practice today. He was 11th in the first time practice session. I don't know if I've ever seen Tomac 11th in a time practice session. Uh, that wasn't that good. He was sixth in the next one. That wasn't that good. And then all of a sudden in the heat race, he was riding awesome, had the lead, and his bike broke. And he had to go to the LCQ. It's like, look, it, when it rains, it pours. Even when he starts riding well in the heat, it comes undone again. There is no way that things were trending toward an Eli Tomac win. And because of the bad gate pick, by the way, he had a bad start. So forget it. The guy to beat tonight was Ken Roxon. He was unbelievably fast. He was great in the whoops when everyone else pretty much, besides his teammate Cole Seeley, those Hondas were working, everyone else was struggling in the whoops. It was going to be Ken Roxon's night for sure. But Ken Roxon is cursed. I don't know why. I don't know what he's done wrong. The fans love Kenny. The racers respect Kenny. Everybody wants Kenny to win. And every time he's going to win, something ridiculous happens. This time, it was Joey Savacci washing out in a routine bull berm. No big deal, just a routine crash. And Roxham was right behind him, had nowhere to go, went flying over a berm. Now, for Joey, it was not good. He was seen holding his right side. I don't know if it's his shoulder or his wrist. That's terrible for him because he's had a great season going as a rookie. Roxon almost lost an entire lap before he could get back on the track and he was 19th at one point and in another this is going to be Kenny's night night didn't turn out to be Kenny's night so guess who's in the lead Cooper Webb again Cooper Webb also struggling in practice not looking so good there and he gets to start when he needs it as he usually does in the main and he's leading and Roxon's looking way back in the pack Tomac has been struggling all day Marvin Muskan goes for it he crashes in the whoops it's going to be Cooper's night again. Wait, what? Eli Tomac is like third now? I don't even know where he came from. I also don't know where the old Eli Tomac went and how he got it back, but he was back. Once he got to third, he went around Savace and Roxham when they were down. He just ate up everyone in front of him, Baggett, Webb. It didn't even take long, and then he took off. It was that Eli Tomac. Now, I talked to Eli after the race. Yeah, he said he was super frustrated going backwards the way the last couple of races have gone. He's not burnt out. He's not over racing. This is not the end of his career. It's not that level of crisis, but he definitely was frustrated the way the last couple of weeks have gone. Uh, he did make some changes. He thinks this is positive. Yeah, he won other races this year, but he says they don't count. That was a mud race at San Diego, not the same. Daytona, unique race, not the same. Triple Crown at Detroit, not the same. Eli said this is definitely the best he's been in a regular 20 plus one main event and he hopes, hopes, hopes that they finally turn the corner. He had actually gotten to the point where he just wanted to figure things out for next year. He had already given up on 2019, but now he's only 21 points down. He was within one race and that's always the goal. Keep it within one race and you still have a shot and the next race is in Colorado. So Eli's looking forward to that because it is his home race. And by the way, not only was the good Eli Tomac back, but the good Blake Baggett was back. Had a little podium flurry there at midseason. The last few races were not quite the same. He also didn't look dynamite in practice. I didn't see this coming. But in the main, Baggett was good again. He took the measure of Webb, finally picked his way through. I'll tell you what though, the whoops were super treacherous on this track. Baggett has been one of the best this year in the whoops one of the most willing to blitz the whoops late, even when they're difficult. But even he went to the jump line pretty early. 
and it was a struggle for him a bit in the whoops. It was just less of a struggle than it was for other runners like Webb. So Baggett actually takes second, Webb third. In the end, Webb continues to stretch his points lead because Muscan did fight valiantly back through traffic after going down early, but the damage is done. Uh, Webb's little, or uh, Marvin's little two race win streak and closing of the points on Webb, uh, that now seems to be a distant memory. Three races remain, 21 point lead for Webb to lock this down. But we have proof that no points lead is safe because we just saw it in the 250 class. Austin Forkner had been walking the tightrope in practice every single session this year. He's crashed over and over and over. In the night shows, he's been lights out perfect. But finally, the practice crash has caught up with him. He went down hard and hurt his knee, then tweaked it again in the final practice. I saw Austin on crutches. He said, I can't race. I can't even walk right now. Uh, we don't know what the extent of the damage is, but by not racing, he was essentially going to forfeit the points lead if Chase Sexton won the race. Chase Sexton and Justin Cooper are now the guys that are going to try to take this championship away from Fortner, and they went at it too hard. In fact, Sexton gets around Cooper. Cooper, a probably ill-advised, Block pass on the first lap, knocks them both down. And who's there to take advantage but Martin Davalos, a revamped Martin Davalos, who has been struggling mightily actually with the neck injury dating back to last season. He had a lot of therapy work done during the break that the East Coast had for a couple of weeks, and he felt better tonight. He's still not right, he's still not perfect, but it was good enough to win. So Martin Davalos is back. There have been a lot of questions. Is this gonna be Marty's last season? He has not denied those rumors. But he said tonight, it's 450 ride next year or bust. He wants a 450 ride. Attention factories, Martin Davalos wants a 450 ride. He's not coming back to race the 250 next year. Uh, this win, though, that's a nice resume bullet. Maybe a 450 team will pick him up for once. He's not in title contention. It's going to come down to Ken Forkner get back on the track. Or, if he can't, it's Sexton versus Cooper. All three of them are very close in the standings. This is going to be some dramatic moments for Austin Forkner to try to dig this title out. As we said, no points later is safe. Once again, we're gonna see if Eli can follow up a victory with another victory, which he has not been able to do this year. And Cooper Webb doing championship type things, even on a night where he wasn't riding spectacularly, he's still on the podium. Goes back to that, when it's your year, it's your year thing. It just might. We'll see what happens next week. By the way, uh, follow the hashtag, this race saves lives and this shirt saves lives. A really cool event raising a lot of money for St. Jude. Pretty much everyone in the Supercross paddock was on board. So that's gonna make this first ever event in Nashville stick out that much more. It was certainly a wild one. Hopefully the fans here have been waiting a long time to have a race. Enjoyed it.